Here we're going to be looking at dividing integers and fraction integers. And I'm going to put these together because I want to try to drive home that idea for us that division and fractions are kind of just the same thing written two ways. But first, let's remember, if we have numbers with opposite signs, such as a positive divided by a negative or a negative divided by a positive, we are going to get a negative number. And if we've got the same signs, we will, like positive divided by a positive or negative divided by a negative, get a positive number. So let us take a look at these examples. First thing I might do is actually look at the sign. So that's a negative number divided by a positive number. Those are opposite signs, so I'm going to say that it's going to be a negative number. Now I'll think about 100 divided by 10, which will be 10. Here I'm seeing negative 14 divided by negative 2. Noticing it's a negative and a negative, they're the same sign, so it's going to become a positive number, and 14 divided by 2 is equal to 7. Remember, I don't have to write the positive. I could if I wanted to, but we usually don't bother. Two positive numbers here, 9 divided by 3, both positive, so the answer will stay positive, and we will get 3. And here we have 18, a positive 18, divided by a negative 6, so it's a positive divided by a negative. Those are opposite signs, I know we'll get a negative answer. And 18 divided by 6 is 3. So negative 3, again, opposite signs, and you'll get a negative same signs and you will get a positive. So fractions are just another way to think about writing a divide and I'm going to show that here with a few examples. So I've got negative 30 divided by 15. Well that's a negative and a positive. So I know I'm going to get a negative number. But let's think about another way to write this. I can't just say 30 over 15, turn that into a fraction. 30 divided by 15 is the same thing as saying 30 over 15. And 30 over 15, with that being a negative 30, is going to simplify to negative 2, because there's two 15s inside of 30. Even though one's positive and negative, I can ignore the signs for a minute and think about just the numbers. 30 and 15, I'm going to divide to give me 2, and I know because they have opposite signs, I'll get a negative answer. Let's look at the next example. A negative divided by a negative, so I should be thinking, ooh, positive answer. But let's write that out as a fraction. Because I can't do it as a decimal in my head, what 9 divided by 45 would be. So if I think about writing that out as a fraction, I might be able to simplify it a little bit. So a negative divided by a negative, you can kind of thinking about those as if they cancel away. I know my answer is going to be positive, I just have to think about how to write that. So are there any common factors that we can simplify between 9 and 45 to help simplify this fraction? Well I know that I can do 9 times 1 to get 9, and I can also do 9 times 5 to get 45, and I should say that that would be a negative 9 times 1 and a negative 9 times, 45, times 5 to get me negative 45 in the original problem. And I've gotten it written out this way. I can think, literally, about a negative over a negative will cancel each other out. I'll get a positive answer. And a 9 divided by a 9 cancel each other out. So what I'm left with is just the 1 and the 5. So I have the answer 1 over 5, 1 fifth. And here, positive, because negative divided by negative will give me a positive. 5 divided by 20, maybe not the most exciting example, let's change that to 5 divided by negative 20. Oops, negative 20. So again, because I'm doing a little number divided by a big number, I don't know how to do that decimal right away in my head. So I might think about writing it out as a fraction, like I did in the last problem. 5 divided by negative 20. And let's think about ways we can write these out as factors. So 5 times 1, and I could write negative 5 times 4 to get negative 20. And here we notice that it's a positive and a negative, so I should be thinking my sign has to be negative. 
And another thing to pay attention to here is that in the last problem, there was a negative divided by a negative and they cancelled away, but here there's no negative on top, so that negative below does not cancel. It's going to be there for my answer. I know I'll have a negative number. But the fives, they do cancel. So that becomes, in this case, keeping what's left, negative 1 over 4. And that becomes our final answer. Another little trick to pay attention to for you guys. Just notice this. The divide sign kind of looks like this. Well, really, all that's showing you is a fraction, where that's one of the numbers, and that's the other number, like 2 over 3. You can blur those away into dots if you want, and you get a, a divide sign back. So that's kind of how you can think about remembering that divide and fractions are similar. The first number is always on top, the second number is always going to be on bottom. And keep in mind, opposite signs you'll end up with a negative for an answer. The same signs, you'll end up with a positive for the answer.